very good afternoon. Uh, I'm an academician and educator, so you will hear quite a bit of philosophical, of course, with some practical perspective based on the experiences. I, I will initially probably take a couple of minutes to uh, express my views about, of course, the topic of the panel and then come to the question that you have asked. So uh, I specialize in uh, systems engineering, process systems engineering, which looks at any system, including the world and a cell or you know any living uh, being, as being made up of parts and how they come together to give what you want. So if I take a systems engineering perspective of this rapidly changing markets and so on, uh, and and you know how do we actually come to terms with it, or you know how do we adapt ourselves rather than coming to terms with it? I would like to identify two important aspects. I don't think we are at a stage where we have ready-made solutions. And I'm not talking uh, with respect to Swine Prop. I'm just saying, in general, uh, whether we are uh, on the industry side or the academia side, we first have to identify what the requirements are, both in the academia and the industry, and what the challenges are. Unless we have done a good job of that, any solution will actually create more problems than actually solving it. So quickly touching base on the requirements on the industry side, you know, uh, quite a few people have spoken here before that. I just want to highlight, uh, based on the recent surveys that were conducted and, and a couple of talks that I've given earlier at other forums, industry 4.0, as they call today, is not going to really take away jobs, but certainly they're going to be job displacement. And the top skills that, if you are thinking, are going to be AI or uh, you know uh, Python programming or Cobra programming, whatever you want to call it. That's not the skill. It turns out that the top requirements are uh, cognitive skills, systems thinking, being able to formulate problems, and very importantly, uh, manage human relations. I mean, there these are some of the top skills that the industry 4.0 is uh, demanding. So obviously, this means that the uh, academia has to align, although I don't believe that academia is only for industry, but a big part of uh, the population that graduates from universities have to align themselves with the skill requirement in the industry. Now, coming to academia, the skills are amazing. I mean, if you look at uh, the learner, the skill requirement is the learner is able to now take all the content that is available, which was not accessible before, and assimilate that and put it to uh, either uh, learning or uh, into research. Now, that's actually a big uh, shift if I compare with the days of my PhD. I mean, the, the access was very limited at that time. So there is a challenge there. And uh, secondly, on the faculty side or on the teacher side, I mentioned uh, this point this morning. There is a lot of open content. And you know, Swayam Prabha, of course, contributes significantly, apart from NPTEL. Then you have, of course, international uh, programs like Coursera and so on. All of this open source content really demands a new set of skills for the teachers, absolutely. The teacher is no longer a deliverer of the content. The teacher actually is there to give perspective and uh, probe and give actually solutions to probing questions, encourage people to go deeper and so on. So absolutely new set of skills are required. And the third player, you guess you heard that towards the end uh, in the previous panel, the parent. Let's not leave the parents out uh, from the picture. They need to develop new skills as well because of the changing uh, family structure, the societal thing. And of course, as I coined the word yesterday, we are now electronic families. We are no longer joint small nuclear. So what are the new skills that are required? That has to be identified, and then the challenges can be met. So uh, I just want to now come to the question that you raised about the quality of the content. I, I got your question right. So the quality um, certainly uh, is, a, is a top priority, both quality, of course, and quantity, but quality is a top priority. At Swayam Prabha, or in Swayam Prabha, which is a Ministry of Education uh, project, we now have uh, really ramped up our checkpoints to ensure that the quality is met through different stages. But let me also tell you that academicians would like to have freedom when they create content. So we are establishing the perimeters of the quality by adopting what we call as a machine learning strategy. So we, we actually ask them to create the content, we give it to the learners, and we get the feedback, and this feedback is actually given back to the content creator in time. That is the new uh, roadmap that we have 
for Swayam Prabha. Of course, you know, this has to be implemented in steps and we have to evolve it. But certainly, the quality depends a lot, not only on the checkpoints, but on what the academician, uh, what, what the subject that is being actually taught. So we need to, have, so we are setting up an academic council actually to evaluate the quality, which perhaps didn't uh, exist before. Uh, that's a quick answer to your question. We can elaborate on that a bit later. I just want to conclude uh, by saying that we talk about changes in technology, we talk about uh, you know the advent of AI and so on, but technology alone cannot equate to progress. We have to transform. We have to really take the technology and other governing factors and convert that to progress. And I, I also want to conclude by saying advances in technology doesn't mean that the uncertainty is going away anywhere. So we'll have to learn to handle uncertainties and uh, students, everybody has to be trained in crisis management. So all of these come together to define our requirements and uh, challenges. Thank you.